welcome back everyone to my channel and uh, in today's video we are going to see how we can leverage the power of deep learning especially uh, long short term memory or recurrent neural network for the fault diagnosis or condition monitoring or of chemical processes during this video series we have been focusing on a single data set that is the Tennessee Eastman process data set if you have not following this series continuously I'll give a link to the first video where I have talked about the entire data set where it comes from what does it mean how you can download it and everything else you can click on the i button i button to access that moving on I'll give a brief introduction to this data set what does this data set mean what does it come from and what does it represent this data set is coming from a chemical process called Tennessee Eastman where there are multiple sensors attached to it to to monitor the process parameter basically we get 52 process parameters from the sensors we which get uh, the reading after every three minute interval and this is how the data set looks like so the first column is the fault number there were total 20 different types of fault has been introduced in this entire data set and for that particular fault we get the corresponding sensor values so our goal is to use machine learning, deep learning or anything we want using the input features or the sensor values to classify between different types of faults. So let's see how we can do it using supervised learning. As we know in every supervised learning we need an input feature X and a target label Y and in order to go in order to do from info, uh, input feature to the target level we need to train a neural network or any machine learning algorithm but for this particular video we are focusing on neural network in the last video we see that we just used a vanilla neural network where we just put a single sample into its in input and our output was the corresponding label but in this video we are going to use a recurrent neural network which takes a time series of data as an input so we'll see how we can convert the, our input data set into a time series data which will be um, appropriate to feed into a recurrent neural network. So the data pre-processing will use a sliding window method. What is sliding window method? We'll just see in short. This is our LSTM network which takes sequentially input features and gives a output as a class label. This is our entire data set where we have uh, on the left hand side the sensor values and on the right hand side the fault number which represents the corresponding fault. So how we are going to prepare the data set? We are going to use a sliding window method. So now the blue, the data set inside the blue box represent our input. So instead of giving one input, we'll give it a sequence of input. For the sake of demonstration, I am taking window length to be 3. That means I am taking 3 consecutive uh, samples as my input. So this will be my X or my one single sample and the red one in the fault uh, number will be my corresponding output or the label. Like that, I will slide my window across my data set and create a new data set where each uh, where my each input will be not a single vector but a two dimensional tensor instead and my output will be the corresponding fault label that's it that's it you need to know we'll see how we can execute how we can perform this in the jupyter notebook so lstm based classification this is a, a regular structure of a lstm network so this is our input feature and this is our fault number so basically this will be our uh, first input this will be our first sample and uh, the red one will be our label so how this goes into the list team the first sample will go to the x1 the second sample will go to x2 and the th sample will go to xt and my corresponding fault label which will be uh, in the actual code a uh, one hot encoded vector will go to the output and this is how we're going to train the lstm network so once we have trained the LSTM network one thing we can do is we can just directly uh, get the performance by using some kind of matrices but this does not give us a whole idea of what is going inside the 
network what, what is going inside this black box network so here is the jupyter notebook i will provide the link to this uh, jupyter notebook in my github and you can access this as it is in the first step we'll import necessary libraries for uh, pre-processing for the creation of the neural network and etc for the matrices and tcne next we are going to import our data set after that i'm going to concatenate both the fault free and faulty data into a single data frame and this is how it looks like after i have calculated that in the first video of this series we saw that uh, there are many features which are correlated with each other and we need to eliminate the feature that are highly correlated with each other so that's why we are doing this code and we are getting a list of the features that we need to drop we found 14 features that are highly correlated and we should drop them so next i'm getting my data frame in data and then reduce data i'm dropping all the correlated feature and there are three different type of faults which I am filtering through. I'm not including them in my analysis because the fault 3, 9 and 15 are very close to the fault free case and it's very difficult to identify for any algorithm. All right. Next, I'm creating this function, sliding window based pre-processing of my data set. So this, using this, I can get a sliding window for a single data frame. But I need to do it for various data frame because I have 21 different types of fault and uh, I'm doing it for 1 to 50. That means uh, here simulation run refers to for each fault. There were 500 simulation run, but I'm, I'm only taking 50 simulation runs so that I can easily compute them. Otherwise, it, it becomes computationally very expensive. And uh, my J iterates through 20 different faults. So here the fault number and then I'm using my sliding window method to get x temp, y temp, where x temp contains the corresponding uh, feature vector, feature tensor, you can see, because it contains uh, window length of data and uh, 52 sensor value. I'm taking my window length to be 20 and stride to be 10. That means after uh, first I take the first I take 20 sample then after that I take I jump 10 samples and then I take my next 20 sample like that I do my pre-processing here and then I'm converting everything to a numpy array so finally if you see x dot shape I have total 40,000 samples and each sample has a dimension 20 cross 38 so 20 refers to the sliding window length and 38 refers to the number of sensor values i have this this is 38 because i dropped correlated correlated features 14 correlated features i already dropped mind you so after that i left with 38 sensor values all right next i'm going to use standard scaler and scale my data set so first i'm going to fit this stand, standard scaler using normal data or the fault free data only and the next step, I'm going to transform my X, this, this X, which contains all the fault free data or all type of data. I'm using my the standard scalar to fit on that. And X SC is my transformed value of the input feature. And right now my output Y has a categorical value. So in output y i see the fault corresponding fault classes but to feed it into a neural network i need to do it the corresponding one hot encoding for that i am running this code first uh, and after that i get y enc which is the one hot encoded vector of the target level then i am doing the training and test split for my data set so this is my X S is the scaled input feature and Y encoded is my uh, one hot encoded vector. So I get X train X test and uh, my training set now consists of 32,000 samples. Now let's train the neural network for training the neural network. I'm using an LSTM model. First I'm defining the input layer. Then in the encoder, 
this means the feature uh, which is basically the LSTM layers. I'm taking an LSTM layer with 128 neurons, 10H activation, which is a bidirectional LSTM layer. Then another LSTM layer with uh, 128 neurons. And uh, then I'm using a dense layer of 300 neurons with dropout to implement regularization and uh, avoid overfitting. And finally, my output classification layer with softmax activation. Then I'm defining my model with input and output. I'm compiling my model with categorical cross entropy and Adam optimizer. And this is how my model looks like. Finally, I have total. Then I'm training my neural network here. This LSTM model is a function that I just created here and it uh, defines my neural network by taking input X train and Y train. Then I'm going to fit my neural network and my validation data is X test, Y test. I'm taking a batch size of 256 and 200 epoch with early stopping callback. So I train it and uh, yeah, this is the result. We can see that the validation accuracy and the training accuracy, there is a little difference. That means that our model is a little overfitted, but that's not the worst case. Well, after the training has been done, we'll evaluate our training model using a confusion matrix plot. For that, this is the function I've created to plot the confusion matrix. And first, what we're going to do, we're going to use our trained model and predict on our test data. Then we are going to do inverse transform to find the corresponding predicted label. And Y true is the corresponding true label for the Y test data. And uh, when we plot our confusion matrix, we can see the confusion matrix for different fault. And for different fault, we can see that the, in the diagonal, the highest percentage of data are in the diagonal, which is a very good case. But for fault case zero and for fault case five, there has been a lot of misclassification between fault case zero and five. And that is that is one case we need to see why this why does that happen and if you look into that you can see that the fault 5 which was introduced it goes on reducing with time and during the end of fault 5 it almost matches with fault 0 so this this misclassification is because of that because do when the fault 5 was introduced towards the end it almost matches with the no fault condition this, this, there's a decreasing fault which was introduced and that's why this fault misclassification happens and next I'm going to do real-time fault prediction and uh, here you can see for different fault class the cyan line represents the actual fault and the um, scatter plot or the output of the LSTM network the more red the color for one scatter plot is that means the model is more confident on that uh, on that uh, decision so for the fault case 0 we can see most of them are classified well there's no problem but for actual fault like uh, for fault 1 we can see there is high confidence it's more red compared to here which is a good thing for fault 3 it predicts everything to be class 0 because this was not added in our system in the first place for fault 5 there has been a lot of misclassification it uh, thinks the fault class 5 to be fault class 0 but rest it's it performs pretty well then we obtain the single FU accuracy matrix for the entire data set for this particular method LST method for that I'm I'm just going to calculate the the accuracy score for each fault class for a random uh, sample run and then I'm just going to combine all them to find a approximate appro average accuracy. And for this, I find the approximate average accuracy to be 